Morning City Cathedral. Welcome to Super Soul Sunday. That's right. It is a great day here on the City Cathedral campus. I'm coming to you live, streaming to you from our campus right here virtually, but I'm coming in your home, in your living room, in your office, your car, wherever you are. Good morning to you. Hey, do me a favor. It's a wonderful day today. It's a special day because it is Super Soul Sunday, and you have an opportunity to participate with us in two ways. So here's what I want you to do. Start a watch party. Start a watch party. You can do so if you're watching us on Facebook Live. And that watch party could win big. That's right. Super Soul Sunday is all about encouraging and increasing evangelism. So what we want you to do is invite your neighbors and followers to join you in church on the live stream with us this morning. So do that right now. And as you're preparing to do so, I want you to also continue to subscribe and like this page and make sure that you stay connected with us. Yes, that's right connected with us because we love bringing the word of the Lord to you on this great day of celebration. As a matter of fact, you can also join us for our drive up Eucharist. And our praise press correspondent is here with me live on our set to give you the updates on what's happening this week. Sister Simone, tell us what's going on. Good morning, everybody. I'm Simone coming to you with the praise press announcements. So today is Super Soul Sunday and the chance to win $250 just Tune in to today's session. That's right. What wearing sports jerseys. That's right. Check your emails and text messages for more information. And everyone is invited to join us for our Drive Up Eucharist today, 10 a.m. at the Woodlands campus and 11.30 a.m. at the Houston campus. That's right. And um, our annual leadership meeting is going to be February 21st at 11 a.m. via Zoom. All leaders must attend, so make sure to check your emails. And do you want to further your Christian education? Well, then enroll today in our Kenaniah Theological College. That's right. Scholarships are available, so please check your emails or call our business office for more information. Thank you so much. And listen, you can find all of that information on our website. Yes, that's right. You can log on to our website, but don't leave us right now. Stay tuned in. All right, now, so let me tell you about this Super Soul Sunday contest. Like Sister Simone was saying, if you are wearing your favorite sports jersey or if you're wearing your favorite uh, Super Soul outfit, whether it's City Cathedral, I want you to watch us right now. The praise team is getting ready to come on. Come on, praise team. Come on, come on, praise team. It's time because we want you to win today. 250 is yours. All you have to do is take a picture of yourself wearing your jerseys, the best dress and the most we'll get an opportunity to win big today now we all win in jesus and if you're a winner i want you to make some noise because worship is going to start in five four three two one let's go
Put your hands together. Say he lives. Say he lives. I'm so glad that he lives. He lives inside of me. Sing it again. Say. committed to you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what situation you're in, he's totally committed and connected to you. Hallelujah. Forever is a long time. That's how long I love you. That's how long I love you. Forever. Everybody sing forever. That's how long, that's how long, long that's how long I will, that's how long I'll come on, you know it, sing forever. forever, forever is a long time, come on and sing it, that's how long I will, that's how long I will, now tell them sing it, forever, I need to hear the That's how long I will. Oh, oh, oh. There you go. Forever. Here we go. Everybody sing it. Say, I'm committed to you. I'm committed to you. 
Come on, this is a celebration. Everybody, everybody. 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 Come on. In spite of the enemy, sometimes you got to praise your way through. Everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Everybody, 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 if you're on your job, I need you to praise it. Come on! Everybody, everybody! Everybody, everybody! Everybody, everybody! Everybody, everybody! Everybody, everybody! Everybody, everybody! Come on! Everybody, everybody! 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 Everybody, 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 everybody,
defend God. We don't have to defend God, the truth. We just need to accept the truth. And we didn't come here to, hallelujah, mesmerize you with our talents. But we came to bless his holy name. He has done great things for us all. We thank the Lord for Jesus. Yes. Oh, taste and see how good God is. Hallelujah. And he's good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. I need your touch. I seek your face. And I need your presence, oh Lord, oh Lord. I need your touch, hallelujah. Seek your face, and I need your presence, oh. I need your, your touch. Yes. I seek your face and I need your presence, presence. Oh. Yes. I'm hungry for you. Hallelujah. I'm hungry for you. Do you desire him? I need your touch. I seek your face. And I need your presence, presence, oh Lord. Oh. I need your touch. Oh. I seek your face. Your presence, yes. oh Lord. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt thee. Yes. Hallelujah. Lift those hands wherever you are. We exalt thee. Hallelujah. We exalt thee. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh Lord, yeah. we exalt thee, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, oh Lord, we exalt Listening to the voice of God, and somebody is being encouraged right now. You've just experienced bereavement. You're going through some physical changes, maybe some financial upheavals. But I want you to get ready for a due season. 
God is about to come full circle for you. Oh, he's about to go all out. Hallelujah. So I need you to press in right now. Lock in to the heartstrings of God. Pull on in in praise. And while that worship and praise team sing that song, and we're going to dive into the word, but let me be sensitive to the spirit. I feel like oh, oh. Like going. I feel, I feel like going. Lift your hands. You who are in the audience. Come on, clap those hands to the Lord, child of God. Sometimes you just got to sing it out. And there are times where you just have to praise God. For he has done great things. God bless you. I pray for every person all over. That the glory of the Lord be released collectively. Wherever you are, please know that God is omnipresent, that he's everywhere all at the same time. And so all of you, hallelujah, please know that he's right there. Not only is he yours for the asking, but he's yours right now. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for Jesus, and I want to thank Jesus for the Holy Spirit. Jesus says that you shall know that I've made it to the Father sitting at the right hand because I'm going to send you back another comforter. But this one will live inside of you wherever you go. He'll be there before you get there as you take him along with you. So we thank the Lord for Jesus. This was a beautiful day in spite of, hallelujah, our audio ministry and video was attacked a little bit. But listen, we have the victory and I feel much better now. God is worthy to be praised. Come on, I'm not, I'm not trying to razzle and dazzle you. I'm, I just want to emphasize that God is worthy to be praised, child of God. In spite of, oh, taste and see how good the Lord is, and the Lord is good all the time. My dear biological sister, Minister Gladys, God is good, baby. Sister Regina, Shawanda, others. Hallelujah. Family, thank you for chiming on and visitors. And I know that um, they did their level best in trying to convey the information in terms of Super Soul Sunday. Every Sunday, every day should be a Super Soul opportunity. And I do believe in a super spreader, not in terms of the corona. I'm talking about spreading the anointing of God, spreading, spreading the love of God all over the atmosphere. Hallelujah. The church should be a super spreader. We should be spreading love all over the world. Hallelujah. Because God is love and we have the love of Christ inside of us. So we thank God for Jesus. Listen, my time is very competitive and uh, we're going to just chime in. And I didn't even give the media ministry the, uh, the teachment on the day. You just have to write it down in about 15 minutes and then I'll see you in Woodlands and then back in Houston for the drive of Eucharist. We're certainly going to be giving out the prayer bands, the 40 days of prayer. Amen.
those of you who drive up, but you got to drive up to get this blessed van, of which I prayed over. Hallelujah. I want you to get a fresh one. You need a fresh one. So you drive up during the Eucharist, um, drive up on the day, Woodlands, you know the times, and of course Houston too as well. The 40-day prayer, man, starts on February, I believe, the 17th. Uh, from 6 to 7. I'm going to be on too as well, and we got some great things that are happening uh, with the City Cathedral Ministry. All right, all of our thoughts and prayers go to the Richardson family and the Gilmore's family and all of that. We love every one of you. We're proud of City Cathedral Church and how you just came together and uh, showed love. Boy, I tell you, our church really know how to come through with, with just an abundance of love and care and concern and comfort. So thank you. I'm very proud of you as your, as your overseer, as your pastor. All right, um, place that reparee in your hand and give it a wave in the life of the Christian symphony and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. Right now, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive and ready to hear the incorruptible, irrefutable word of the living God. I will never be the same. Never, 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 never be the same in Jesus' name. God bless you. My great deacon, Deacon Thomas, is here to make sure that all of these young people are receiving the Eucharist too. And we pray for them, man. They've been, they've been dedicated and proven to me that they're with me and with this vision, with the ministry, and they love you. And about every, every week they share their talent and practice and all of that. Hallelujah. I, I need for all of you to be standing with us in prayer for the next 30 days. I don't want you to miss a day from praying in the morning. And pray for extreme favor. Extreme favor. Nothing is wrong. Just pray for extreme favor. I got about four or five things on the table that I'm believing God for. I want you to be praying for that. Every person, I, I make this call. I need you. I don't, don't just put all the, 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 the weight and, and the responsibility on me to pray. I and, the, and, and thus I do pray daily. But I want you to, uh, and, and not just my prayer team, my prayer partners, um, um, intercessors, but I need all of you, all of our covenant members and friends, uh, I need you every morning for the next 30 days uh, before you do what you do normally. Uh, I want you to be praying for those four things that I'm believing God for that I'm not permitted to specifically uh, disclose to you, but they're good things that I'm believing God for. But one thing is for triple favor. I need him to, to give us triple favor for City Cathedral and Citywide Club to our social work uh, that we're doing. I'm believing God for some great things to happen, and prayer would get it to us. I just believe that the bedrock of our ministry is that um, we do a whole lot of praying here. All right, come on, give it a wave in the life of the Christian Symphony. And uh, I want you to go with me to the book of the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, real quickly, the book of Hebrews. Uh, Sometimes what God wants to do um, in this morning worship, sometime he selects uh, worship. Worship and praise. And it's in that order. It's never praise and worship. It's not from the outside in. It's from the inside out, worship and praise. And um, so I, I, I thank God for this worship and praise team. Um, there are times the way I just have to sing. I'm a singer. I got saved singing, you know. All right. Um, in the book of Hebrews chapter 6. Look at verse 13. I know I didn't give it to the media ministry, but just catch up with me. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13. It says, when, when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. I'm going to surely, I mean, that's like an incredible promise. The Lord gives him this, this precise and prophetic promise to Abraham. He says, I can't base my promise or the validity of my promise on anything else outside of myself because there's nothing else that I can leverage 
my promise on but me. That's some kind of man. And I will surely, Abraham, bless you. And then he tells it in the, in the, in the various other chapters. I'm going to bless you and, 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 and those that, 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 that curse you, I'm going to curse them. I'm going to bless your descendants, your seed, as many as the stars of the sky. You know the story. Just read chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Great read, man, that I believe that will bless um, your life. Um, go, to, go to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. Um, and when I say the read chapter 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I'm talking about in the book of Genesis. But go to, go to chapter 12 in the book of Genesis. Chapter 12 of the book of Genesis, um, verse, verse 1, Brother Josh. IMD. It says, the Lord had said to Abram, it says, what I need you to do, and this, and this was the plan, the road map to fulfilling the promise or getting you to at least the place of promise. I need you to leave your country, your people, your father's household and go to a land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curses you. And all the peoples, it says, uh, on earth will be blessed through you. And look at verse 4. So Abram left as the Lord told him. So chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17, all of that readment will certainly help you in terms of, of, of just enjoying the story. Now, I want to use as a clarion real quickly, uh, part four, stop the noise and stay poised. Said for me, stop the noise and stay poised. All right? Um, by now, if, if, if you look at your previous notes, you would see that the word stop in the Hebrew tongue is the word shakam. It is C-H-A-C-A-M. Shakam deals with just simply restrict it. Don't give it permission. Deny its reason to exist, to muzzle it, to muffle it, to silence it. To stop it is to silence, to take out the teeth of your noise where the noise no longer has a bite. Stop the noise, stop the noise, the word noise in the Greek is kakos. You may say kakos, but kakos, K-A-K-O-S. It simply means that which is wrong and worthless. Why put a lot of emphasis and a lot of time and energy with that which has no worth? If it has no worth, if it's wrong, then you have to let it go. You can't even draw your allegiance or even your attention to because it's worthless. So here it is. If then it is worthless, if the noise that represents wrong or worthlessness, then you automatically divinely authorize to stop it. You have in your hand keen discernment to recognize not all noise is worth your attention. If it's not worth your attention, then you have biblical um, permission to muzzle it, to restrict its energy, to restrict its steam, its steam. It is important that you understand that just because there's noise around you doesn't have to get in you. Don't allow that which has no ability to shake you, shake you. You have to shake the very thing that's trying to shake your world. And sometimes, it's not all the time, uh, your quest of trying to be success or successful, it's your obligation and the quest to handle the noise in your life. 
And can I give you permission by way of God's word? The only noise that the Lord has authorized us to make is making a joyful noise unto him. What does that mean? Is when I praise him from the worthiness of his person and it gets on disconnected folk nerves. Hallelujah. That's when you're making a joyful noise unto the Lord. The enemy can't decode the praise from the worthiness of God that comes out of your mouth. It ain't joyful noise to him, but it's joyful noise to the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord from the worthiness of his person. So you have divine authorization, consent from God to remove demonic noise, noise that represents worthlessness or even wrongness. Hallelujah. You got to remove it. Stop waiting on situations or others to come in your circle of influence to remove the noise that God has permitted you to do. You have to do it. So in this little thesis, the noise can very well be impatience, the impatience that sometimes we deal with. I've always taught City Cathedral ministry and members, be patient with the process. Hallelujah. Those that are chiming on, you got to chime on so that we can record your listening. You got to be always patient with the process, beloved, because the opposite of impatience is patience. Sometimes the noise can very well be the impatience in our lives, the impatience that's in our lives. So there are three points we'll quickly, my next 10 minutes that I want to rest my hat with. Number one, I want to deal with the perks of patience. Number two, the proof of patience. And number three, the paralysis of patience. The perks, the proof, and the paralysis of patience. There's a benefit. The perks of patience really deals with, there's a benefit of being patient, beloved. There's a benefit of being patient. Don't you ever think that your um, uh, denying your rights to be impatient is uh, worthless? Mm -mm. No, no. There's a benefit of your being patient. Okay. Go with me to the book of Isaiah because Isaiah is a, is, a, is a very supportive read that will support this argument. Chapter 40, you know where I'm going. Look at verse 1. It says, this is God telling this prophet Isaiah, he says, I need you to go to my people and comfort them and say to them, and, and he says, speak tender to them. I know that you're a little upset with them. You're a little uptight with my people because of their, their habitual sin. But I need you to be very patient. I need you to tenderly speak to them. Speak to Jerusalem and proclaim to her. He described his people as a her because the her represents the womb. I'm about to use my people to give birth or to impregnate to give birth to a promise. So I need you to speak to them and proclaim to her that her hardship, hallelujah, has been completed. That her sins has been paid for. He says enough is enough. Because Israel, my people, are dealing with the stress. These, uh, and, and at, at this particular era or season, Israel was dealing with distress. So he says, I need you to speak to Israel. And then it skips down the same chapter to verse 30 and 31. Look what it says that I'm about to do some great things. If you were to read the entire chapter of chapter 40, it talks about the blessings and miracles that, that God was going to do through Israel, but it was contingent in verses 30 and 31. It says, verse 31, it says, But those that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. He shall soar on wings like eagles that should run and not get weary and walk and not faint. So part of the contingency of fulfilling the promise is well, then I need you to wait on it. And the waiting is not some dormant word. It is a progressive word. He says, you got to keep on serving me while patiently waiting. You can keep on serving God impatiently. That's not biblical rate waiting. It says, tell them, I've already given promise that I'm about to comfort them, 
but it is contingent on them being patient with that promise or patient with the process. So for them that wait on the Lord, I'm going to renew that strength if they progressively, continually, patiently serve me from a place of waiting. Are y'all getting this? Now, in the New Testament scripture, in the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, let us not get weary in well-doing. It is a well-doing is that when you wait on the promise, but sometimes the enemy can present certain things on the canvas of your mind and, and um, uh, the theater of your consciousness to not wait on it and to get in a hurry uh, because you want it right now. He says, don't allow that to weary you. Don't get weary in well-doing. It is a well-doing is that, that when you wait on, on God's promise and promises. Don't get weary in well-doing. I want you to underscore the word weary because the word weary in the Greek is ekakeo. It is E-K-K-A-K-E-O. It simply means to get tired, to, to become impatient. Make sure that you don't do that even with the prophetic promise, with the precise promise. Make sure that you don't get weary. Make sure that you don't get impatient in waiting on him. Come on, be patient with the process. Because when you do that, the book of Job will kick in. The book of Job, in fact, go with me real quickly. I'm moving quickly because I really want you to get this. Chapter 4, a very interesting read. Chapter 14, rather. Look at verse 7. It says, at, at least there is hope when a tree is cut down, it will sprout again. And its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground and its stumps die in the soil. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. At least there is hope for a tree that is cut down, the roots have already rotten. But yet at the scent of rain, it can live again. It doesn't matter what's around you. Don't, don't allow the hopelessness to get in you. How can then a tree live again when the tree has been cut down and its root, its life source, have been uprooted and the scriptures said, yet at the sin of rain, it lives again. What does that mean? It said, we don't have to wait on the physical manifestation to be convinced that our recovery is on its way. Hallelujah. God is so powerful to where he can increase your spiritual sensories to know that your exit plan of entering into a new season in your life of betterment is about to show up before the manifestation. It says even at the sin of rain, the sensory, just the sin of rain, not the floodgates. The rain hadn't come. I'm just sensing it, that things will become better. So there's no wiggle room, you know, to the saints to become weary in well-doing when you have keen discernment, beloved. God has increased your discernment to know that better is on its way before it gets here. Come on now. You got to encourage yourself. Be careful with the noise of impatience that allow you to become weary in well-doing while waiting on the promises. I hope that you're getting this, beloved. So even while I'm waiting on God's promises, he gives me perks. He gives me this divine encouragement. Number two, the proof of patience. This is when you know that you have the proof of patience. Real quickly, go with me to 1 Corinthians uh, and, 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 and see, don't allow the camouflage of our daily prayer life to justify our need for patience when we pray, Lord, give me patience, but then give it to me right now. That's the wrong form of prayer, beloved. You know, you're going to ask the Lord, Lord, give me patience, but give it to me as you want me to have it, when you want me to have it. But say, Lord, give me patience, but give it to me in a hurry. That's impatiently prayer, and that kind of prayer doesn't work, beloved. That's impatiently praying. Hallelujah. But the proof of your patience is really found from in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, look at verse 4. Love is patient. 
Love is kind. It does not envy and it does not boast and it is not proud. He says, man, you got to stay loving while waiting on it. <laughs> right? Even though when you know that you have a right to have it, you still got to stay loving. You still got to have a loving disposition. You got to, you know, you got to stay loving while being challenged patiently. Now, it's easy said and done. It's easy to me to quote some scriptures and to give you some relevant scriptures that will support the argument. It ain't easy, absent of the Holy Spirit, to help you. And especially if you started late, it, it's hard to be patient. Hallelujah. See, it's very hard to be impatient while being loving because impatient ain't loving. You understand what I'm saying? So, 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 so you want to be loving while waiting. You've not gotten it yet. You know, you know that it's on its way. You know that God has already promised it, but you've not received it. It's not very easy to be lovingly patient. Hallelujah. But the scripture requires that we have to stay lovingly patient even while being challenged. Does that make any sense? Like a soldier in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. You know, a soldier that is sold out for God. I mean sold out. Completely, completely committed to the things of God. We have to be lovingly patient even while waiting on him. Now listen. Wisdom is designed to help you um, to walk in patience. Because wisdom will interview saying that if you get it too quickly when you, when you know that you don't have the necessarily um, um, temperament to handle it once you get it, wisdom says you ain't ready for it yet. Does that make any sense? Okay. Go with me to the book of Proverbs right after Psalm. The book of Proverbs chapter 19. Real quickly, the book of Proverbs chapter 19. Look at verse 11. He says, a man's wisdom gives him patience. It is to his glory to overlook an offense. It is to your advantage because when you don't overlook an offense, it's hard to give glory to God. It's hard to reflect him when you give time and energy to people offending you. And I've been there when you've not done anything. And yet people sign themselves up to jack up your day of peace. I wish I had somebody here. This is the time where you got to like walk in your wisdom, right? <laughs> Quickly. Because you got to be on. It's not because you're weak that you overlook a wrong or a hurt or a bitter moment that people induced in your life. It is of the wisdom of God that says it's better that you overlook it. Because wisdom will always give you patience. You know, sometimes you got to have patience with foolery by not um, giving wind to it. You can't give oxygen to foolery. You who fear the Lord, you have wisdom. You who reference him, you have wisdom. You who are saved and sanctified, you have wisdom. It is the wisdom of God that gives you Patience, that's the proof that you really have wisdom, is when you walk in patience. Not from a false place, not from a, a, a place of, of, um, of, of fallacy. No, no, no. No, no. You're walking in patience because you are a place, or person rather, of wisdom. Not from a place of fallacy rather. That's the word fallacy. All right? So wisdom will always give you Patience. Say it with me. Wisdom will give me patience. One more scripture. It says that we must endure an environment that is chaotic calmly. Sometimes the Lord won't take you out of a chaotic situation, and yet he requires you to be patient in it. Sometimes the Lord will leave you in a chaotic environment to prove to you how patient you are in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That will sometimes induce your need to lean on the Holy Spirit to empower you to do what your flesh is not designed to do. Your flesh is always ready to take off, hallelujah, and come back. 
Yeah, your flesh is always ready to take off in combat. It's ready to become combative. Hallelujah. But it is the wisdom that is inside of you that will give you the patience to stay calm in and, watch this, in a chaotic environment. It is the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God that would help you to do it. That's the proof if you're walking in patience. Is when you are aware that sometimes your environment doesn't induce the patience that you need. It is sometimes the Lord would allow you to walk in a chaotic situation, not to weaken your faith, but to prove your need to walk in patience. Does that make any sense, beloved? Hallelujah. Wife, you don't know how patient your husband is until, until you go f fishing with him. <laughs> it, takes, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of dopamine, you know, uh, to, uh, to fish. It takes a lot of patience. And women are the same way. When you're shopping and everything, you don't be in no rush, you know. You patiently go and window shop, and you go in all of these stores and carry on because that's what you do. So we have to wait on it. Sit with me. You, you have to wait on it. Waiting time is not wasted time. I've said it before. It's just a matter of time. He that is willing to wait wouldn't have to because your willingness allows you to wait on it with ease. Does that make any sense, beloved? So the perks of waiting becomes your benefit. Because as you wait on the Lord patiently, as you wait on the Lord patient, not in, see, you can be waiting on the Lord impatiently and be not renewed with eagle's wings. You have to wait on the Lord patiently and then he renews you with eagle's wings. And then he'll, he put running under your feet. Hallelujah. Strong oxygen in the liturgical lungs of your beingness. Run and not get weary and walk and not faint. Oh, man, that's the perks of waiting on the Lord. The proof of it is, is, when, is is when you can still retain your disposition of staying holy even in um, a chaotic environment. You can still patiently waiting even when you're being challenged. You can, you can do it from a calm place. You can endure it, brother from a calm place. All right, lastly, the paralysis of waiting. The paralysis of waiting, beloved. What makes patience weak is impatience. Mm -hmm. What makes patience weak, patient weak is impatience. The paralysis of patience is impatience. In the book of Hebrews chapter 6, and you just read it in verses 13 through 15, when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself. And look what he says in verse 14. I will surely bless you, Abraham, I'm going to give you blessings. I'm going to bless your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And in verse 15, and so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. God will always give you a promise that seems impossible to achieve in order, watch this, to force you to believe that if God doesn't do it, it cannot be done. Let me say it once again. God will always give you a promise that seemingly uh, uh, feel impossible to achieve in order to force you to believe that if God doesn't do it, it cannot be done. The promise was to give Abraham a son. And descendants as numerous as the sky or the stars in the sky as a reminder that every time Abram look up and see the stars, it will remind him of the prophetic promise that God made. But every divine promise requires extreme patience 
Because a promise without patience is frustration and aggravation. Because Sarah's impatient, hallelujah, to not wait on God to conceive a son, Isaac, she permitted her husband, Abraham, to sleep with Hagar, hallelujah, her Egyptian maidservant as a surrogate mother to Ishmael. And Sarah became jealous of Hagar and her son Ishmael because, hallelujah, they reminded her of the child she didn't have and wish for. And there was hell between Hagar and Sarah. Don't allow the good of your promise to be robbed by the bad of your impatience. I need you to tell yourself that God has made it crystal clear, precisely clear, that he's going to bless me, but we've got to wait on it. Because, hallelujah, what would be a delight for you today could very well be a disaster in your tomorrow. So it is imperative that we learn how to just wait on it. You're waiting on it, though it's going to take time, and it may take time. Take time. It's not an indication that God didn't say it. Hallelujah. If God said it, it's already done, but earth has to always catch up with what heaven has delivered. I wish I had somebody. You have to learn how to wait on the promise in spite of. Don't allow the good of your promise to rob you or to be robbed by the bad of your impatience. I want you to tell yourself that if he said it, I've got to wait on it. Because what would be a delight for your tomorrow could very well be a disaster in your today or in your uh, next day. Look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, it pays to wait on it. It was 14 years later, Ishmael was born when Sarah, hallelujah, and Abraham had a son named Isaac. The promise was through Isaac. I want you to get this. But it took 14 years. Isaac was the fulfillment of the promise and not Ishmael. Because the nation and descendants will come out of the loins of Isaac. All right, let me just give you the etymology of it and the genealogy of it. Isaac married Rebekah and had Esau, watch this, and Jacob. Jacob, hallelujah, married Rachel. Hallelujah. And had 12 sons that represented the 12 tribe of Israel. You got to understand that sometimes the prophetic promise has to go through a season of waiting. Hallelujah. God knows, hallelujah, how to cause you to have patience because he's working on something that perhaps you don't see. And that's not important. Not all the time you need to see how he's going to do it. You just need to know that it's already done. Hallelujah. That God has made a promise in your life, but it is contingent on your waiting for it. Sarah and Abraham, hallelujah, had to wait because this promise was not designed to come through the loins of Ishmael. Hallelujah. This promise was designed to come through the loins of Isaac because Isaac was the fulfillment of the promise through the nations and descendants that will come out of his loins. Hallelujah. Through Rebekah. Rebekah had to have two sons, Esau and Jacob, but it was through Jacob's seed. 
Hallelujah. When he married Rachel, Rachel then gave birth. Hallelujah. That represented, hallelujah, the 12 tribes of Israel. It was from the 12 tribes by which we've been engrafted in that. I wish I had somebody. I need you to look at your neighbor next door and say, neighbor, I may didn't come from the 12 tribe. But because I've been engrafted, I wish I had somebody, because I've been assigned to that promise as a Gentile, it's got to come to pass. And sometimes your promise will come through a strange connection. Sometimes your promise will come through a strange connection. I mean, the Bible says, and the Gentile people were blessed. Hallelujah, through Jesus Christ. And that became their inheritance of Israel. Israel blessing, hallelujah, was for the Jewish nation. But because we received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we've been engrafted into that Abrahamic promise. And is worth your, your waiting on it. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord and bless it. It's worth your you're waiting on it. But don't allow impatience to paralyze your waiting on it. Because sometimes impatience can very well be the noise in your life. I got to hurry, but listen, I want you to go to the phones. Be a blessing to this ministry, uh, child of God. Those of you who want to give, and those of you who, are, who have chimed on, you've homed on, I appreciate you logging and all of that on this live broadcast, this streaming piece. Be a blessing. Come on. Be a blessing to the body of Christ. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Go to the phones and dial the number that's on the screen. The numbers. Houston location. Houston campus. 713-659-7750. Woodlands. 281-292-5402. Sugarland. 281 Four nine eight seven seven two two. I need you to do that. I'll even mail your contribution, your tithes and offerings to post office box eight eight zero zero one Houston, Texas, seven seven two eight eight. That's Houston, Texas, seven seven two eight eight. Post office box eighty eight zero zero one. That City Cathedral Church. If you want to bless me, put my name on it and mail it directly to that post office box. 88001 Houston, Texas 77288 Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Come on. Go and you want to cash app me. You want to be a blessing. That's dollar sign Leroy Woodard. Leroy Woodard. Be a blessing. Maybe you want to bless the ministry, the church. It's dollar sign City Cathedral. And I believe that QR piece is on the screen. You just take your phone and take a picture and you know what to do and just and it goes directly to that safe site of city cathedral be a blessing to this ministry amen we're on our way we're on our way man we're on our way and i don't know what team you're pulling for and all of that um you know um, but god is a winner you on a winning side beloved you're a champion hallelujah you're a champion you're a champion. You're a champion. You're a champion. You're a champion. You're a winner. Hallelujah. You're a super winner. Yes, you are. I mean, you have you have the you have the supernumerary. It's the super spirit. Hallelujah. Supernatural is working on the inside of you, man. So be a blessing. Be a blessing. Sow your seeds. Those of you, God has blessed you. you be a blessing to this ministry. Come on. We have. We have a budget that we have to meet. We have expenses and all of that. Hallelujah. We're halfway there. We're about, we're about 75% debt free. But the other 25% we got to pay. Insurance and payroll and operation. Still got a little bit of a little mortgage that, that we pay. Amen. But we thank God for what he's doing, beloved. Oh, God is good, man. God is good. So be a blessing. Pay your tithes and offerings. 
Give your tithes and offerings and your blessings to City Cathedral. Make your checks out right now. Those of you who need prayer, please go to the prayer line. Go to the prayer line and dial the number that's on the screen. That's area code 605-313-5107. Area code 605 313 5107, access code 164419 pound, 164419 pound. Be a blessing, be a blessing, be a blessing, be a blessing. I'm very comfortable uh, with you, with you. I'm, I, I, you, you, you are my connection. You know, I was so delighted to see some of the CCC members and all of that. So delighted to see y'all. Some of you that I hadn't seen in the physical, I've been thinking about you. And uh, so you are my, this, this, this medium becomes our connection, our connection. And we're going to hang out with this for a minute, but we're going to return. Shoot, man, I am like, can't wait, can't wait, can't wait to return to the physical worship. I wish y'all were here. Man, it's incredible, right? So I want you to continue to be patient. And those of you who are congregating this Super Bowl Sunday, be extremely careful. Don't have a lot of folk over. Come on, this thing is still alive and well. You got other uh, uh, variants and all of that. So we got to be extremely careful. Be wise now. Be wise. Continue to mask up. I keep masks with me, man. Everywhere. All right? So ain't nothing wrong with wearing it. Just, just these are the times right now. Okay? But this too will pass eventually, and we will return. I can't wait. I can't wait. But in the meantime, we're going to give it our level best, our undivided best in terms of worship. Okay, I have to go, but worship and praise team, thank you all for chiming on. Brother Lewis, come on over here. Uh, get one of the mics and all of that and explain. Y'all put the camera on him. Bless him, bless him. Explain what's happening. Are they chiming on? They're chiming on. Hey, right. everybody, it's your chance to join the Super Soul Sunday Challenge. That's right. We have the fortune of bringing something to you. That's right. We're going to bless your pocketbook today. If you are watching right now with your jersey on, I want you to send us a picture of you and your whole family watching. The family or the group with the most and best dress could win $250. So they can't get the money until they send the picture. Have right. to send a picture. This and ain't no wishful nope, request. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, They've got to send it. us proof. I get it. They got to send us proof, and we put a link in the comment section. So as you're looking at the screen right now, okay. look at the comments. There's a link to a website that you can go to. All you have to do is fill it out. Give us your name, your address, your phone number, and that picture, and we can then judge all of the entries, and the winner will be chosen today. You don't have to wait. Today, we're going to choose the winner. And they will get the prize today. They'll get the prize today. Not a delay. Not a delay. Now I've already worked it out with the finance. To the past, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all heard it now. That's right. Do what he just told you to do, and let's enjoy this Super Soul Sunday today, Super Bowl, and may your best team win. Brother Darren, let's take it away. So let's Regina, go. the worship and praise team, God bless you. And if you can't use that link, send it to my phone number. I put that link in there as well, so That's I right. don't want anybody to miss it. See you Sunday.